In this video, I'm going to show you how to clone a CAS 3 Plus, which was one of my dream project. Uh, I was uh, very much worried about uh, cloning the CAS because uh, if something happens to the CAS unit, you won't be able to start the car as uh, the ISN number mismatch between the DME and the CAS. So in, in my brother's car, the CAS unit got faulty. Whenever you turn off the car, the lights doesn't turn off uh, and uh, the release from the rear keeps on clicking. So I got a chance to uh, take it out and clone it with Xprox. So here is the location of uh, CAS unit. This is CAS 3 plus. Uh, you have to remove the uh, panel from here, three screws. Then here is the connection. You see that red cable. So there are two connectors. This is the big one, uh, which comes from uh, the fuse box and junction box, everything. And this one is from the key uh, reader, uh, the small one. So from the two sides, you just press and pull it out. The other one you just uh, press on top and remove the connection so uh, there is limited uh, uh, what do you say light in here you have to remove this uh, cast unit out just by removing that white clip so this is the cast unit i have shown the uh, network connection sorry the circuit diagram and ground one ground two you can see it's just for your friends you can just pause there and uh, see how how's the connection going so i'm using xprog 5.55 uh, i was testing it with a chinese one chinese clone and this is a connection which i have made on cas um, now i just opened the xprog uh, software and selecting the device mcu it's uh, really straightforward you don't have to get confused it's really easy anybody can do that only part is uh, the soldering where you will get a little bit messed up so you just select the devices eprom you can see the eprom data uh, mpu the eprom uh, which eprom you're using device brand everything and you just open a new session and read while uh, you start reading you can see here bypass security in most of the cases, if your CAS was uh, turning on your car, uh, it will not have any issues. Uh, the processor, the MCU will be able to read. Uh, if uh, your MCU is really bad, it won't uh, pass this section. The bypass security will stay uh, for like uh, whatever time you keep. So if it takes more than five minutes. Just uh, think that your connection, which you made from Xprog to the circuit board is faulty or uh, your MCU is faulty. So this is one thing. So it's, it's just gonna start reading the data. Usually it doesn't take this much time as far as I have seen uh, in uh, many videos. So uh, reading EPROM takes like uh, two, two minutes, something like that. It's really fast. So you have to save the data. You can see the save tab next to the open. Uh, so you have to see this uh, data has to be, uh, what do you say, um, not the same. It should be different. The characters should be different. Uh, then only you can make sure you have read a proper data from EPRO. So just save it with whatever name you can uh, give, like you can identify. So this is uh, EPRO data, so it's better to name it EPRO uh, so that you don't get confused. Now, once you save it, remember the location uh, you, you don't want to mess up with anything like that so i'm, I'm gonna read uh, the flash data now so go to new new session devices the same procedure the last one 
device goes to flash. So you select the flash from this and read. You see that? And read. So uh, reading the flash will take more time. Uh, in my case, it was like uh, 10 to 12 minutes. Um, so that's why I have fast forwarded in uh, some places just to save your time and uh, you can see it uh, reading the flash when soldering you have to be really careful you don't uh, want to short any of those components or uh, apply too much heat uh, so that the component comes out or get faulty so it's better to uh, learn a little bit of soldering first and you should have a good soldering iron with a thin tip uh, there won't be enough space for the normal soldering iron to go in between the commoners if you cannot uh, do the soldering it's better to take it to a mobile shop which can uh, make the connection for you and get getting a Xprog clone from China it doesn't cost that much for a BMW DIY guy uh, this is a mandatory tool you must have a Xprog so that you can reset the FRM and cast unit I don't know what else Xprog can do but uh, these two I have already tested and uh, uh, I would say that this is a must tool that you, you should have. So you can see here uh, it started verifying the data. If it gets stuck in verify, this is a tip of uh, the soldering end. I bought the tip separate. The soldering end is really cheap like uh, two or three dollars but uh, the tip is uh, maybe uh, like five dollars so I started reading so in a verify part if the verify is not proceeding uh, you have to uh, close the application then copy a new xproc file to the c drive deleting the one from uh, the desktop i'll show you later on but uh, just for your information in between if you get stuck in verify device um, but so that was one of the problem that i had so i don't want you guys to get stuck in there i had to spend like two three days to get it sorted out so this is the flash data we already got it now we're gonna save it to our document folder or whichever folder we want to put it and uh, name it as flash Whatever name you give doesn't matter. As I told you, you just have to identify it separately. You see there, uh, this means it, there is data. You see that uh, different characters. I don't know what to call that characters. So whatever you read must have those kind of characters uh, to make sure that you have uh, reliable data from the processor. Uh, in the case of FRM also, you need such kind of data. Otherwise, uh, you can, uh, what do you say, yeah, you will be having a faulty data. So just make sure you have these sort of characters in between. Just for your reference. It should not be like FFF, YYY, all from top to bottom. It should be something like this in between. For the EEPROM and flash so now you have to save the flash once you save it uh, I'm sorry for this uh, I think uh, I just um, skipped one part that's why it's coming in between so sorry for the repetition I don't want to voice over again so now once we have it We want to save it in a location that you know. So once 
you save those two, you have to start working on your uh, donor uh, cast. So donor cast, you have to make all the salt ring, same as uh, the one that you did. And uh, you see the connections. Uh, it's better to go with my diagram rather than looking at this video uh, of a connection you will get confused i have clearly mentioned in the beginning how will the connection come uh, so i did not cut any connection from there so i'm gonna write to the e prone first then to the flash so you select the device select the subtype and select the main device below which is EEPROM 512 you see there so I've selected now I'm going to open not new I'm gonna open the EEPROM data which I have already read so select the EEPROM data it's straightforward you don't have to get confused it's really easy if uh, you have an XPROG this is a benefit. You don't have to go to a shop and beg. So you just started writing it. Writing doesn't take for uh, that long for EEPROM. Uh, for flash, it does take time, as I told you. Flash is a ra rather big data. I don't know if uh, the flash has to be read and written back. But I did it uh, so that uh, I don't get any errors. So if you are stuck with the right device, this particular window for a long time, it means there is a problem with your micro uh, MCU, the device. So uh, in that position, uh, when it is right 1%, uh, just uh, wait for like five minutes if it's taking more than five minutes it means your donor uh, device or the mcas is faulty so you just uh, have to wait uh, five minutes uh, after five minutes if this not start to write if it doesn't uh, cross one percent you have to stop it and check for the connection and uh, if you have a, another donor you have to go for another donor cas so you see here it is writing it took like 15 minutes for me to finish the right uh, procedure once the right procedure is done it will verify once the verify is done um, you're good to go it will the window will just uh, clo will close by itself so that's it uh, now you have to just remove the connection and use the cast in your car so this is what i told you if your uh, CAS uh, verify gets stuck, you have to copy uh, from the CD, the X, uh, XPROG desktop, and uh, paste it there by deleting the one from the C drive. Just uh, delete this and paste the new one. Uh, so this is a way to avoid the verify error or uh, the verify window staying for a long time and each time you do uh, the export program you just uh, merge that registry file just to make sure you don't have any errors so always whenever I open export program I merge the registry file and this is the connection that I gave uh, you can just check the components uh, what Here. are out there things like that Is if you get confused i was checking in many videos one. that's the reason i'm putting this video, video so this is the device and this is uh, board that i used